I read somewhere that there are close to 16,000 items in old school RuneScape in the 20 something years that this game has been around. Today, I bring you 15 lesser unknown, uncommon items. Comment down below if you know any of these items. None of these can be purchased through the Grand Exchange except one of them. Also, comment down below if I've missed anything or is there any other unique, cool, unknown items, and I'll make a part two video. But we'll go through the 15 items in this video here. I just want to show you right now we have the hair clip, origami balloon, karamaja rum, which is a banana and rum, bolt pouch, severed leg, necklace of faith, Harry's cutlass, and Lucky's cutlass, the rapier, not to be confused with the rapier you can get from raids, undead chicken, spadeful of coke, rune satchel, key flask, rod of Idenis, and mystic cards. Hair clip. This item was added back in 2015 with the introduction to the King's Ransom quest. Uh, this item can be obtained back by speaking to Merlin on the first floor of the Camelot Castle. He's the wizard on the east side of the castle. Once you enter into this door, he appears. Speak to Merlin, and you're going to do the option one from our last adventure, and he will give you the hair clip. And the hair clip is also the same use as a lock pick and it will eventually break. The origami balloon was added in 2006 with the release of the Enlightened Journey quest. Uh, making origami balloons can result in 75 to 80,000 crafting XP per hour, which is pretty decent. You can create an origami balloon by using a papyrus on a ball of wool, and that'll get you the balloon structure. Use a candle on the balloon structure, and that gets you the origami balloon. Then you can light the origami balloon with the tinderbox, and that will give you 20 fire making XP, and the balloon will float away. Pretty cool. So let's do that again. Papyrus on a ball of wool. You can actually use a die. Oh. First, you have to use the candle on the balloon structure. Then you can use a die on the balloon, and you have a purple balloon. You can light that, and visual effect of a purple balloon going off in the distance. So this is a little fun thing. This was added back in 2004 when you accidentally add a banana to a rum and a funny little chat message comes up. You stuff the banana into the neck of the bottle and you begin to wonder why. I just find that hilarious. So this is done accidentally during the Cybo 10 Trio quest when you accidentally put a banana instead of a sliced banana into the rum. This next one is pretty interesting. It's a bolt pouch, and it can be obtained from High Crow and Keldegrim. It's not in his normal general store. As you can see here, it's not here. So you have to speak to him, actually. And you're going to select the second option when you're asking about ammo. And he will sell you a bolt pouch for 1,500 coins. See there? Yes. I'd like to buy one. Now, this bolt pouch is pretty cool. It was introduced into the game in 2006 and recently updated as soon as 2021. You can store up to four different types of bolts 10,000 of each bolt in here as you see i'm just using it all on the bolt pouch you can also store a mithril grapple in there not sure what you use a mithril grapple for in this game anyways but let's try to store that in there oh i don't have room hold on store that in there okay open it up so three different types of bolts you can see here we wield that one right now so you can see the mithril grapple is on the top right now above the ammo slot so if I open up the bolt pouch, you can see I have three bolts from my bolt pouch, extra ammo, which is the grapple, and then my current ammo using, which is diamond bolt E. So the cool thing is, you come over here, and you can select to wear the mithril grapple. Pretty cool. Just a quick, quick swap from that. And that can only be used if you have the extra ammo slot currently in use. If not, remove that, then it's gone. The extra ammo slot is gone. Severed Leg. Pretty cool weapon. It's just a fun weapon added in 2020. It can be obtained from a corpse cart back in Darkmire. Let me get out of here. This guy's hitting me. You can wield this. It's just a cool cosmetic fun item. It has no, no stat bonus to it, but it's just cool visual effect of a severed leg. You can only obtain this item if you complete Sins of the Father. Running around with this item, I'm sure you'll get some some people looking at you funny, because uh, it's a very unknown unknown item. I had no idea about it until I looked it up myself. Here we have the creation, or you can purchase it, but it's going to be a necklace of faith. This was added back in 2017. It's a basically a topaz necklace enchanted with the level three enchantment spell. 
which is one cosmic rune, five fire runes. So we'll go ahead, cast that. And you have the Necklace of Faith. Very uncommon, unused item. Uh, the great thing about this is it will restore 10% of the prayer, of your prayer, um, when your hit points drops below 20%. So I have 99 HP. I go under 20 HP. 10% of my prayer will be will be added and, and the uh, necklace will be destroyed. So these next three items, the Harry's Cutlass, Lucky's Cutlass, and the Rapier can be obtained by speaking to Smith on Mostly Harmless. In order to speak to him, you must have the Book of Privacy. Of Piracy. This can be obtained from a bookcase or by talking to Bill Leach, who is also on Mostly Harmless right here at the pub. So I just spoke to him, got the book. And same thing with this guy. You trade him. You don't see the items in the store. So you have to actually speak to him. Depends if you have any cutlasses. That's the third option. And then you can buy the three items. So let's first buy Harry's Cutlass for 1,040 GP. There is the rapier. The rapier and all the other cutlasses were added in 2006. You need 40 attack to wield the rapier. It's the same stats as the rune Scimitar. It costs 25,600 coins and you must complete Cabin Fever, fever before you can reach the island and before you can buy the rapier. Harry's Cutlass, also added in 2006, sold by Smith. 1,000 coins. It requires 20 attack to wield, and it's the same stats as the Mithra Scimitar. Looks cool. It's just like a pirate sword. And then lastly, we have Lucky's Cutlass, which was also added in 2006. You can get it from speaking to Smith on Mostly Harmless. 2,500 coins. It's a completing cabin fever, and this requires 30 attack to wield. So again, just a cool pirate item. The Undead Chicken item was added into the game in 2006. It's obtained during the Animal Magnetism quest. I did this quest so long ago, I totally forgot about this item. And you can obtain it again after the quest is done by speaking to Malcolm. He's the farmer, the ghost farmer, west of Port Phasmatis. Just come over here, speak to him. You need 10 Ecto tokens, so I have 15 of them. And then you ask the first option, can I buy a chicken now? Can I buy one chicken? And there you go. Now you have an undead wield wieldable chicken item. Just a stupid goofy item to have on your guy. Provides no value, but it's funny. This next item is not commonly used, not commonly done. It's in the Blast Furnace mini game. It's a spadeful of coke. It can be collected by collecting coke right here. Spadeful of coke from the coal slot here, and then filling the stove, you get five fire making XP every time you do that. This was added in 2005, and that's basically um, that's basically it. You just refill the uh, the stove there. So, spadeful of coke, it could be, you know, mistaken as the other kind of coke. The next item actually has six different variants of it. So you'll see here in a second, I'm going to activate this altar and kill this new root, new roost. So the next item is a rune satchel. It was added into the game in 2007. Players can create these monsters in the basement dungeon of the Tower of Life once the quest has been completed. All right now I'm using Eye of a Newt and a Feather on one of the altars here to activate it and get the new roost, which is a mutant and a chicken. So actually, oh, this is on the collection log slots as well. That's pretty cool. So we got a different item that we've been looking for, which is the tea flask, which I'll talk about in a second here. There we go. Rune satchel. Collection log slot item for all you collection log slot hunters. So this is in the collection log slot under other, under creature creation. So you can see here, I just got the tea flask and the rune satchel. There's a plain satchel, green satchel, red satchel, black satchel, and a gold satchel. They all do the same thing, just a different color. So I'm going to equip to this right now. Oh, inspect. No, nope. I want to wear it. It goes into your shield slot. So we're going to beacon a moat. That's what it looks like. Put the rune satchel, rune satchel on. Let's do it with the rune satchel off. And you just wave your fist. 
So if we go ahead and inspect the rune satchel, you can see it's empty. You can actually add a triangle sandwich, a whole cake, and a banana to it. And now you can inspect it. it. Contains a triangle sandwich, one cake, and one banana. Tea flask was also added in 2007. You can use this with five cups of tea. You can just do that here. One, two, three, four, five. Use five cups of tea on it. Look into it. There are five cups of tea in this. You can drink from it. Pretty cool animation. You can also use it on an empty teacup. So this one is a little bit of a pain to do. First, you have to make the rod mound, which is using the soft clay on this coffin under here. A going to Canifus in the hair dog hair of the dog pub, the basement in the back. Use the soft clay on the coffin to get the rod mount mold. Then we head over to any furnace. Going to go over here with a silver bar, mithril bar, and a sapphire, and you're going to make the silver throw rod. I don't know how to pronounce that. Next, we have to cast the level 1 enchantment spell on it. Cool animation. You have to go under Patadomus. I think that's how you pronounce it, with the rope. Use the rope on the well, or maybe not. Maybe the rod on the... Yep, okay, use the rod on the well. You lower the rod. It seems to glow, rather strange way. Maybe you can wield it. So there we go. There's the cool look of it. So the staff is nothing crazy. It's basically just a magic staff. It gives you plus four magic. I don't know who would use this thing. I don't know who has it and why they have it. Please let me know. Um, it's useless. The The flail is, is much better. But there, this thing has a special attack. It can only be used 10 times. And it sucks up 10% of the special attack. And can be used against these guys, the Vampire Juvelins. Um, once they reach less than 50% of their HP. So let's knock, knock them down to that, and let's see what it does. Okay, it's kind of a cool animation. I don't know what he's doing right now. I'm just floating there. Is he stuck? I probably should have read about this. I think he's stuck. Oh, okay. So now it's a 9 instead of a 10. So once this thing gets down to 0, it turns to dust, and it's gone. And the 15th item on this list is the throwable playing cards. You can get this by going to Diango and typing in this code I will share down below and on screen. Very odd, long, weird code. Enter that. And he'll give us the mystic cards. So you get this cool, cool animation you guys doing here. And the cool thing about this is, let's go find another player. So you can actually throw these cards at another player. And uh, you'll just you'll just drive people crazy, and they'll have no idea what you're doing. I don't know how many people know about this, and how many people have this item. It's just a very random cosmetic item. You're just throwing cards around. Pretty goofy. It's like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards, just chucking them at people. You have unlimited, of course. Did you know any of these items in my inventory before this? If so, hey, you know more than I do about this game. If not, comment down below, let me know, 